Welcome to Retouching 1.1. I'm Stephen Wilson, a photographer and retoucher based in New York City. You can find my work at www.swilsonphotography.com and at swilsonphotography on Instagram. This is a series of videos where I'm going to show you my retouching process from beginning to end. All right, so we're going to jump into this image right here. It's an image from a shoot I did with Lululemon Labs a couple, uh, maybe a month or so ago. Uh, it's an outtake from the selects from my personal selects, and uh, unfortunately it wasn't used in the actual lookbook, but I, I really like the composition and the uh, the pose. So we're going to retouch it now and just uh, bring it up to standard. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is create a copy of the background layer. And we're going to do that by doing Command J. Or you could also just drag it and drop it into a new layer here. But Command J does the trick and we're going to call it Spot because all we're going to be doing on this layer is removing spots, abnormalities, anything that looks like dust, or uh, even freckles and, uh, and, and blemishes that I just think that are going to be distracted, distracting to the overall composition. So I'm fairly happy with the uh, spot removal there. I'm pretty sure we got all the dust spots, and if not, we'll we'll be working on this image back and forth. So we'll see anything that we didn't pick up uh, in in the, in the future. So um, from here, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and increase the width of this image so that I do this for for two reasons. One is that I'm not exactly sure I like where she sits in the composition it's it's interesting but i think it could be more interesting if she was pushed to the left so what i'm going to do is actually extend that um canvas all the way to the left or out further to the left and probably give it about the same the same width on each side and i do this and i'm, I'm not going to crop it either what I, I'll, I'll when i save it i'll save it as is um and that's for a couple of reasons. One is that it'll give me options in the future to go back and crop if I wanted to. But if this was going to be in a design, in a lookbook, in uh, a spread, or in whatever it, like the actual final image ended up being in, it would give that designer, the layout person, whoever's putting this into its final um collateral a little bit of options to go and move around and and play with it so if they wanted to put text on the right side right now that's basically the only place you'd be able to do it without putting it over the subject so let's just go ahead and do this and we'll talk more about that in uh in the future on that layer now just uh just condensing because what i'm going to do now is about to create a new layer copy and this one we're going to call liquify because we're about to liquify a couple of things on uh on the composition that you know make it look a little better i 
And just as a little trick, I usually liquefy by only doing certain spots at a time. Um, it just takes a lot of like memory to liquefy the entire page, especially if you've got something that's 14 inches wide and you know three to four hundred pixels per inch. So um, I just use the marquee tool, select out what I'm going to be liquefying. Give yourself a little room because you don't want to liquefy to the edge and then when you come back to your composition that you are have a hard edge where things like are clearly skewed off and, and, and you can see that edge of liquef uh, liquid liquefying. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna create another layer copy and we're just gonna call it hair because that's all we're gonna deal with in this le in this layer so all I'm doing is I'm gonna take a um, the lasso selection tool and I am going to just make a quick selection around where I don't want or actually where I do want to take away and I'm gonna take that all the way out here as you can see, the feather in this selection is one pixel, not a lot. It's just going to give you a little bit of a, a softer edge, so you're not going to be seeing it exactly uh, if you were to come back in on it. And I'm going to take the stamp tool, and all I'm going to do is select out here in this white space or the, the neutral space in the background, and I'm just going to paint in. And that's just a really quick, rough selection, but to show you, it's already made quite a difference on the way that's gonna look. So we've cleaned up the edges around the top of her head, but it looks a little bit heavy handed at the moment. So all I'm gonna do is create a layer mask and I am going to just paint again with a soft brush back over a couple of those spots where we took out the hard edge and just really bring some of that texture back in so that it doesn't look so actually I'm going to paint that out again because I don't like how that looks This one actually may have to take a little bit more time and just pull this texture over from there. If you're noticing, the hands are a lot more red at the fingertips uh, than the rest of the arm and even the legs, so there's a really big contrast here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Again, just Command J. I'm going to rename it. Uh, we're going to get rid of this layer mask too because we don't need the hair mask. Oop. Just want to get rid of that. Damn, all right. Just drag it. If I can drag that to the trash. I'm gonna rename it. I'm just gonna rename this. Um, actually, I'm not even doing this correctly at all. Let me get rid of that. So to do to do the uh, the hands, all I'm gonna do is to do a levels layer. And I'm just going to call it hands, hand color or hand tone. Kind of like pan tone. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to inverse that level or that layer mask. And I'm just going to paint in um, really quickly 
what I actually want to affect. So now that selection is the only thing you're going to see when we start messing with the levels. So really quickly. Okay, cool. So, just rename that hands levels just so I can tell what I did there. Um, for the next part of this, I'm going to try and match the skin tone in the arms, legs, and hands to the more bronzed skin tone of the face so basically going to do the exact same thing we just did with the hands and we're just going to do it all over the legs hands and face so what we really needed to do was to get those tones a little bit more even on the hands before we tackled everything on the arms and legs so here we go it's going to do another layer a levels layer and before we do anything it's going to inverse that lever that Sorry, inverse the uh, layer mask. And do a quick selection of just the arms, the hands and legs. Again, with the white as the background layer, I'm just gonna push Command Delete and it's just gonna fill those and we can have a, have a quick layer mask. So, let's pull up levels and let's just get a quick reference from the face we're gonna try and pull in more orange and more yellows and a little bit more red maybe so it's starting to match a little bit better to her face and her skin tone it's not as cold down at the bottom Let's start there and then we can drop down the opacity and maybe drop it to, yeah, let's say like two thirds or 66%. Again, let's just make sure that our edges are not changing the fray. Again, it's just a soft brush. We're gonna take out any changes that happened into here. Cool. So, that is basically the beginning of our image now. Everything is pretty, pretty solidly together. Uh, it's cohesive. Now we can really actually start getting into the nitty gritty, like cleaning up of this file and making it really pop off this page. So, by doing the, the nitty gritty, the first thing I'm gonna do is go in and do a dodge burn. Uh, two two layers a dodge and a burn layer to, to really even out the tones and the skin and the face so by doing that all I'm gonna do is create two curves layers and one I'm just gonna pull highlights in or I guess it's not highlights just add some exposure and the next one we'll just go ahead and call that dodge and 
the next one we'll do will be the exact opposite and we'll do a curves and we'll pull out there pull down the exposure just keeping it relatively centered from that curve line and call that burn and all we're gonna do is inverse those layer masks so we're back to the original nothing's changed and we're gonna be able to paint in with our brush I'm gonna take it back down to about a 10% opacity I don't mess around with flow very much I think the opacity is is just a, a really good way to control your your amount of effect so I, I use opacity other people use flow to change that at it's all up to you all all what you you feel comfortable with and how you're using your stylus and your and, and whatever else that you want to use to make your effect work for you I happen to like opacity and here's how we're gonna do it so again just to reiterate I've created two dodge and burn layers by not using the dodge and burn tool at all i just created a dodge layer by doing a an exposure in levels and then a burn layer by dropping the exposure in level or sorry bumping up the levels man bumping up the exposure in curves and then dropping the exposure in a curve layer here all i've done is created two layer masks that are like completely uh, black and we're just going to paint back in to see that effect underneath that black. <clears throat> to do so, you need to be painting white on black. Again, I'm at a 10% and a really soft brush. So I'm on the level or on the curve with the layer mask. And I'm now painting out these dark spots you're going to see in here. And I'm just smoothing out skin tone. got to make sure you're white I don't know what happened when I selected back but it's it's got to make sure you're white selected and this can get super tedious <clears throat> and I usually do it once sit on it do something else add another layer of like adjustments and then come back to it and do it again once my eyes have adjusted and looked at the tones again because everything I'm doing is a super 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 subtle adjustment So I feel like this is a pretty good place to move on. Um, again, if I need to come back and I see something glaring or if like after my eyes adjust, I see another like splotchy part or something, I can always come back to this. But from here, all I'm gonna do is create, well, first of all, I'm gonna select these two layers and I'm going to group them by doing Command G. And I'm just gonna name that group Face Tone. And from there, all I'm gonna do is, or for my next step is I'm gonna do a similar process and I'm gonna dodge and burn the entire image. So now that I've got um, the uh, tones of the face, I'm gonna do now the tones of the legs and the arms and, uh, and separate those out really quickly um, as well. 
So literally the same process. Alright, I think we got tone pretty pretty solidly covered there. Um, this is going to sound repetitive, but all I'm going to do is do the exact same thing again. Um, creating two more dodge and burn layers. And this time it's just going to be literally affecting the light on the entire subject. So, um, bear with me. This is not tonal and 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 spot this is all going to be actual uh light and just in <clears throat> excuse me enhancing light and shadow Now, what I want to do is address this pink dress. Um, I'm just going to start working with the colors of the actual image now. Um, actually, before I do that, I might try something else. I might actually like address the background color, and then from there I can use that the uh, layer mask from that to then work on the dress. So let's do the background color first. Uh, I just want to make sure it's an, a good neutral. It looks right now like it's got a little bit of blue in it. And I want to make sure that the background color is actually a neutral gray. And without... With a little bit more explanation, I don't want to change that neutral gray while also changing the tones of her skin. I want to address those separately. So we're just going to... We're going to create a new... Um, layer mask and layer... Um, adjustment for just the background. And to do that, all I'm going to do is quickly select her with the magnetic lasso tool. And then now I'm going to go back and refine the selection manually and make sure that all of my edges are cleanly selected and I'm not going to affect anything from my image. All I'm going to do is just use the shift and the alt key to add and subtract from the selection. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the polygonal lasso tool because you can't actually get outside of the um, canvas with the other two and 
With any kind of feathering, if you change the selection, it won't take into account the edges here. So I just select everything outside of the canvas with the polygonal lasso tool, <clears throat> just to cover my basis. And you'll what I want to do now is just create a uh, hue and saturation layer. And basically, I want to inverse that layer first. So the mask is everything we've just selected. And all I'm going to do is take that saturation down to nothing. So that becomes that wall basically becomes a, a pure gray tone. It's there's no colors left in it. So as you can see, that was a lot of blue in that wall. And I just want to make sure that my edges around here are not looking skewed and crazy again. So I'm going to take the brush tool and take this out too because there's probably some blues in there. And do you notice too when we selected we didn't really worry about the flyaways here because it's really difficult to tell that those are going to have tone in them or uh, color tones. So it, they're just reading as, as strokes at the moment. All right, so there's that. So now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to use the same layer mask. All we want to do is create another, uh, we're going to trigger a hue and saturation layer. And we're going to copy that one, borrow that layer, we're going to say yes. And then all we're going to do is delete that one out. So then all we want to do is inverse that so now all we have selected is the subject and from here all I want to do is go back and just select the dress so I'm gonna just take out her skin anywhere that there's skin Again, just command delete and all we have left now selected is the dress and now we can start to affect the dress color which like I said the actual production piece of this dress was not that bubblegum pink we need to take out a little bit of red and uh, desaturate the saturation of that um, dress just to create a get to the correct color, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Cool, so I'm gonna take these and make them a dress group. Call it dress. And now you can see we've changed that from a super bubblegum pink to a really, really, desaturated lavender-ish. Um, I don't even know if that's lavender. It's just a really desaturated pink. And again, before and after. And I think the after looks a lot better as far as the intended actual color of that dress. <clears throat> All right. So now that we've done that, I'm going to do an overall desaturation of um, the reds and the yellows in the skin tone. She's just a little bit red for my, uh, my taste. And again, I'm going to pull the selective color tool and we're going to just do her skin. So to do that, I'm going to do a selective color tool or a selective color layer. And I'm going to pull that out of the dress layer or out of the dress group. But I'm going to create another copy 
And I'm going to add that to that. Just place the layer mask, delete that one out. And then I'm going to invert that. So now the only thing that we're doing, going to be affecting, is actually the dress. Uh, sorry, is actually the skin tone because there will be no color in that background now. Just made her look a little bit more like a natural white skin tone. Rather, and The last thing I want to do is just put a little bit of a final curve on it. And to do that, what I like to do is to do a hue and saturation le level, desaturate completely, do the change the blending mode to overlay, and see so that's going to give it that nice pop of color, pop of contrast. And all I'm going to do is drop the contrast down to about 80. And then all I want to do is take out and inverse that back. And then I'm going to paint back in where I want that contrast to be. Yeah, so that's that's about it. I think that's that pretty much covers what I what I wanted to show you. And let's show you from the beginning. Let's do a background copy, boom. And let's drag that copy to the top. So this is a, a major before and after. And I'd say it looks really, really nicely now.